Blessed. Blessed. Greetings, greetings. Greetings, Bridget, brother. What about? You're one of the only men in Jamaica that is bearing the hottest fire on all of the things that are going on, man. I had to come on here and give you some flowers, man. Because give thanks, brother. insofar as anything that's going on that is not kosher, you can trust Mr. Vegas to come into it. I thank you for that, man, because many of our entertainers who have the voice and platform that you have are scared. Right. They're afraid. I'm not sure what it is that has taken away your fears, <laughs> but <laughs> you certainly uh <laughs> been blazing the fire real hot, Bridget. <coughs> you have to understand that when you're from a society where, especially if you do the history on Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at history and Jamaica and look where we as a people are coming from, right? Um, post slavery, yeah. Even even if we got like the post slavery, and I realize the love and the togetherness that we used to have for each other. Correct. You understand? Post slavery, it used to be like fighting against oppression. Is a massive. Post slavery, it used to be um people like Christmas time now, yeah. Correct. Um, people, the whole culture, the culture, because people don't understand the culture. You know? Oftentimes I hear artists go, yo, Batman and Sadamite are going to mash up the culture and destroy the, the culture in our society. When in truth, other things were more detrimental than even Batman and Sadamite, them, 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 them ignore, they are praised, are glorified. You understand what I say? And, um, and them don't even understand, say, when it comes down to the culture of our society, you know, like even from post slavery. Yeah. It used to be like like a, a Christmas time now. This is how the whole celebration and everything that used to come about when black people, even though we, we emulated um the things from the Europeans and like Christmas and everything then Christianity and all them things, but it was a level of togetherness. Right. We're like no, yeah, the, 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 the everybody link up and cook and eat they, and they would be like celebrate. more of a community vibe with the Right, come together during the holidays. It used to be. It used to be. If we even check when we are grown up, like me and you were to say morning, sir, or morning, madam. Or exactly, morning, because I'm sister. 45 years old, so I grew up at a time right. when we used to say good morning, um, sir, good morning. Madam, and if you pass and somebody and don't say good morning and them tell your mother, you know, exactly. you get a get too lick. <laughs> you understand what I say? Still so we I are don't... coming from that part of society where it, them say take a village to raise a child. And that's where we are come from as a people, you understand? And Where's... to see that people in people people um are now expecting us to believe or accept that um hooliganism, criminality, and all of them things that must be glorified. When or or at least the standard and status quo and we should just accept it. And I'm I'm exactly. not for that. So so, for example, exactly. I saw a headline recently, just today actually, two young, well, not too, too young, two entrepreneurs somewhere in rural Jamaica were murdered in their shop. They, they're of Chinese origin, Chinese ethnicity. And people shared a video in, in, in a group that I'm in, which is sort of a, you know, a socialist political group. But that's not acceptable. And there's no outrage. There's no, there's no, um, there's no morality to say wanton murder like this should just be unacceptable in our society. I have adver observed, um, Mr. Vegas, that since the state of emergency was called by the Prime Minister, over a seven-day period, there were more than 38 murders. Now, I'm not talking get by COVID or death by accident or nothing. I'm talking murders. But I if that was happening in Afghanistan or Iraq, like you have five U.S. soldiers dead, it would be the front page of every newspaper. It will be in CNN, Fox, 
NBC. I mean, we're having 38 murders in Jamaica, a country of 3 million people. And, and when me and you can see that, and they want us to accept that, you know what, this is the norm. So we should accept it and we should continue to support people that are touting how bad they are, how much guns they have, how much people them kill. Man, I make music and I realize that they make make soundtrack for badness because it's not like one time, and, and it goes to the argument to me, I say, one time a man did I hear a gun song, I say, I just entertainment. Exactly. You understand me? I, say, so I, I, I posted come... something on social media today of the clash. I don't know if you were, you, you probably, you, yeah, you're the same age as me. So Sting 10 was bound to kill versus Beanie Man. It was a lyrical cash. Now, back then, those two gentlemen were a little bit more, you know, different than they are today. But it was still mostly in the musical realm. Now, these guys are actually killing these people and they're killing each other. You know, the guy from the city got shot in the head. I was like, what the hell? I mean, this is not like a... <laughs> this is not like... So, it, it, we as, as people who are now in that generation where we're supposed to be leaders... We have to set the standard. Let me tell you something that is sad. Back in the days, we used to be so united and look out for each other and stand up for it with each other. You know? Mm. Even when before, when, when Buster Monty and, 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 and Michael um, and Norman Monty were like running the country, them, them did around the country. Correct. When they were running the country, black people used to be more together until politics took a hold of black people in Jamaica. You know, courtesy of, courtesy of the, the American and, 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 and the, the other opposition. Russian there. influence, yeah. Right, and, and the influence. The people who have implemented in the society to damage mm. the black people, their morals, and damage the whole fabric of the society. So we have, I, we I, blame, have, I blame Mr. Siaga. So many will say Mr. Siaga should be <laughs> alone as a hero, but he was the principal... Um, you know, culprit behind this because he he took our what was the sort of normal political divide and division and, and, and difference, and because, because of his role in the CIA, would escalate it into political killings like like assassinations and murders. Before the Siaga era, time. before the Siaga era, politics just, politics used to be like um, festivals and competition. That is it. My father spoke of that time. My father come from that era. My father's from my mother spoke, from my, mother, my mother spoke of that time. So I'm from Trenchstone, Jamaica. And as you know, Trenchstone is one of the hardest places to live on earth. And right. during that time when my father was when I was born and my father was there, that was when it all started, it's nineteen seventy six. But before that, my dad says you could have come from Tivoli and, and Denham Town and you could hang out with the people in uh, Rima, Arnett Gardens and Trenchstone. It was no you know, people that kill each other uh, uh, over over political. Right. It was defenses. like it was like a festive vibe. Yeah. In in this, would, it's just a battle of ideas of whose ideas would be better for for improving the country because at the time Jamaica was still an underdeveloped country, right? So they were saying whose ideas, and of course Michael Manley's ideas were superior because he was saying let's focus on people centric policies. Now I'm not a poly, I'm not a PMP or GLP. I'm a Rastaman. So. In the can't see the of dreadlocks right now, but the, the, <laughs> but pro the problem is the problem is sorry for cut you. The problem is we cannot have the uh, we cannot have a um a, a, an honest discussion about Edward Siaga without people want to kill you or want to say you're being political, and there must be in order for us. And these are some of the things that I you understand me? I said that I feel bold enough we have to, to say. Said. We have to say. Like, and, like, like, and like, like, come on. I'm after the truth. The truth is that, is that, is that truth. I mean, is that a thing where it's equivocal? Is that a thing where. And it's most people who don't do the research. It's most people who don't do the research, you know. And them all is, the people that don't do the research, them all is that the most say. Correct. Or the most pushback. Correct. You see what I say? So, them things that kind of embolden my stance on, on society and, this, and the way I speak about society. Um, no, but what, what, what is interesting for me, Mr. Vegas, and if you don't mind sharing, what really caused it? What was the trigger point in you just being able to come out? Because as an entertainer, you're putting yourself at that point where you might not get booking locally, you know what I'm saying? You might not book your show because depending on who's in power, they will say, they put, Vegas is going to say something political. 
what was the thing that caused you to say, I have the freedom to speak on these things because they're important to me and important to our country? All right. When I went into church, when I went into Christianity, I went into Christianity because it's something that was implemented in my system where I said, all right, there's a God and there's a Jesus and we're going to get punished um, if we don't serve this God and this Jesus. Do you mean so early went, on or later on in your career? Later on in my career. Okay. Right? But it used to be, it used to be a, something that plagued me, like, yo, I have to get back to this God and this Jesus here. So when I went to church, I went to church sincerely, like, yo, I want to find out more about this God and this Jesus here. You understand? Because um, I grew up in this doctrine, and I don't want to die and go to hell and them something there. Because them teachers <laughs> said there's a hell. A hell will to burn forever. And I used to be so afraid of this hell. That's if I fly on a plane and I drop asleep, I had to get some dreams, say, yo, the plane and I go down and them things. Till one time the plane, actually, the, the plane come like it, it have a crash. I go to France. So, you know, so the fear take over everything. And me decide to yeah. go to church. And when I went into church and start reading the Bible, I realized that some things just never add up. Correct. Um, so, me, I'm, in reading the Bible, I realized that God had played more than one character in the Bible. And when, when I realized that God was playing more than one character in the Bible, I started questioning the whole thing. And mm -hmm. the, 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 the morals, the morals and, you know, you know, like, where's the moral compass in this book here? You see what I'm saying? You know, so, the but things of the If you think the Bible, it's a storybook. I mean, there were many, many wars. There, there, there was, like, famines. There was, like, real serious things that he was doing to his subjects, his people. Right. So, that, is, that is God doing that. Right. right. And, and, and to children, it. and to children and all of them things here. So I started mm. asking questions, and when I started asking questions, people started rejecting me. Right. Yes, Which church said, were you in? Which church did you join in Jamaica? I didn't have a specific church. I was just going to different, different churches. You understand? Is it like Marion Hall or... Um, um, no, 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 no. I didn't, have, I didn't have, any, I didn't have any, any, any special church. And I, I, right. I just went to church. Like I would be... I remember I had a virgin that I used to sing with. I made a whole gospel album, everything. And mm. I was singing with this virgin. And I used to go to his church. And one time I went to the church and a woman called me up. You know, I went mm. there with a girl. And she called me up with the girl and started questioning me about what am I about and all kind of foolishness. And I'm like, you are the, you are the one who called me up. You should be telling me what I'm about. Mm. So I realized that some of the things them were, the behavior, the behavioral pattern and everything you know, when I witness me say, yo, this thing is not, um, you know, for me. And then I started right. reading the book. So in reading the book to get to your answer, so, to your question. So may I just ask one question here before you go into that? Because you were sort of the younger generation when I was growing up. Um, you, you were, you, you're how old again? Remind me how old you are. I'm, I'm close to 50. Okay, so I'm 45. So I was watching you and back in the days it was Lieutenant Stitchy, Papa San, Lady Saw, Beatman, and those guys. Now, when Lady Sam, um, Papa Sam, and Stitch and those guys turned to Christianity, was that part of what influenced you to, to pursue no. that um, path? No. It was, it was later no. on in your life. There were things along the way, like when Onil from Weissmill died. You see what I say? When Onil from yeah. Weissmill died, that kind of the trigger thing because, you know, when people die, they get scared. Like, so, you that know, was a bridge, yeah. Right. Right. So that, there were triggers. You know, sickness, I want them to have bad acid reflux and the the doctors and thought it was like some pericarditis thing. So there were things that triggered the whole desire or need to like go back, go to church and go serve God and all kind of something. Understand. You understand what I'm saying? But it was none of them things there because I, I got my break after Stitcher and, 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 and the rest of them turned Christian. Got you understand? It, got it. But, but, but what, what brought me to this place where I'm at now, where, where I'm so like, yo, the truth needs no defense. And, um, Correct. You know, if I don't say it, if I don't say it, am I serving my purpose? Because indeed, you know, all it's 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 um it's a given that all of we are gonna leave here one day. Mm -hmm. you understand? And when me when we start um process that, me realize that if I don't say the truth now, are what seems more plausible than than than, than some of the narratives I'm out there. If I don't speak on it now, and I may be wrong sometimes, I'm not I'm not going to be a hundred percent right all the time. 
But at Correct. least I'm putting forward an argument where you can look into what I'm saying and dissect what I'm and saying, do your and, own saying research. and do your own research. Right. Because maybe you can come up with a more cogent argument than my argument. You understand what I'm saying? Indeed, indeed. But at least I put you onto something. See, so when I start checking the whole biblical um, tales and all them things, and I realize, say, yo, you know, say, a man really created that thing here and started mm -hmm. doing research on Serapis Christus and Constantine and um, Fromentius that took Christianity into Ethiopia and all them things there. And right. start looking at the, the, the people and we do the research that the Ben Yusuf, the man, the Dr. Clark, the man, the Walter Williams, the man, all of these people and John yeah. and Maxwell and start looking at the metaphysical part of it and then I meet up on like people along the way. Like even the same young Pharaoh and, 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 and Polite, the man, all of them, the Alim Bay. You see me mm -hmm. I say? All of them people have started I said, like I, I would sit, I was, I would just sit and watch countless videos, like hours of videos, hours, hours, like just right. zoning and I just, and just educate myself just off watching these scholars, you know, Doctor Small, them, these people, just watch, you know, the university mm -hmm. scholars, them, the people, them, and the cross reference, the whole thing, right. and then I enrolled right. into, in, uh, um, I went and did my GED, and then I enrolled into Broward University, and and right. I started Florida. More, educating myself and in reading more. I realize that the society that we live in is controlled by a certain set of people. And the people, them are so brainwashed, you not even see it, that they are being programmed. So when I see, like, the same black people, them were supposed to have fight with each other, fight against each other, then we start talking mm -hmm. about it. I realize that people are in poverty. Why we are in poverty? Because of ideological, um, 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 the ideology. Why we are in poverty? Because we're not united. Why we are in poverty? is because we praise the oppressors them. We subscribe to the oppressors them and the oppressive means, like politicians and all them things there. So I just start talk, you know, the truth about the matter, the truth about what is keeping us back as a people. And in so doing, when I start talking the truth now, people start come more at me. Like I became a target. Yes, you understand? I, like I, I went into a church to tell, to tell a pastor, I said, women are not prostitutes to wear makeup and lipstick and keep me out of the church and drag me that, out. That was, and and that's when they became the, the viral, the viral. And then everybody yeah. was like, oh, shy mode, oh, shy mode. And I was like, you know, because I remember so I'm still in my infancy, I come out of Christianity and I know the, the truth about Africanism, I know the truth about um, Egypt, I know the truth about Sudan, the truth about Victoria Park up at Uganda, where they name half of Queen Victoria, and mm -hmm. I don't know our, our park the name of a, a white woman in Africa. So I start right. questioning just these simple things. Yeah. Yeah. So I try to start, why is it that 10% of people in an in a, in a, in a African country are rule 90% of people, black people? Why 10% of people have this power over 90% of people? No, so then these type of conversations. These type of questions, they, they, those who are in the authority figures. So, for example, when you when you had a debate with the, with the, with, the, with the reverend and he used to keep fake the viral I usher him out stuff, they don't want you to challenge what they have to say. They want to be the arbiters of information, and so they can lead their flocks. So they become like the gentleman from from Mobi who who tell them to go suicide each other to to go to commit right. sacrifice of each right. other. That is right. what they want. They want unfettered um, ability to tell people what they want to tell them without anyone ever challenging it and giving people a in any kind of information that would make them think for themselves. Right. And that's what you were right. right. So that's why you were welcome. Right, 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 right. And that's what you were But that's an interesting thing though, because I I I am um, I wondered what, what 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 caused that because as you know people in entertainment have a big voice, a huge platform typically Social media now is, is allowed you to be able to say anything you want to say without the filters of, of traditional media. And it is a political risk, maybe even a commercial risk, to speak out. Even though I've seen you, you know, doing shows you know, internationally still, but locally, I bet you, you probably, um, you know, your name gets called for something and they go, no, don't, let's not use Mr. Vegas for this anymore. Um, so you have to rely yeah, on whatever you heard. Yeah, Listen, me. I was doing a charity show, right? And even before, even before I became so outspoken, I was doing a charity show and we tried to get some sponsors. And one of the major sponsors in Jamaica, one of the major co companies in Jamaica, they said, oh, they not sponsor me because I'm too much on social media attack. Correct. <laughs> and I was no, like, no, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I get that as well. Show, By the way, I'm, I'm a, I'm a 
I have a PhD was in biomedicine. Like, so I, 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 you know, if anything, I'm probably one of the most authoritative persons to speak on, on the, the global um, pandemic and the response in, in Jamaica. I have a PhD from Yale and I went to NYU and Columbia, I mean, Johns Hopkins University and studied at Cambridge. So if most people just look at the, the, that um, resume, they say, wow, fantastic. Um, however, right. however, when they, when they, um, when I speak about something that seems to be different than what the messaging that they're sending out, all of a sudden, you know, my mental health diagnosis is now the center of everything I do. So I'm doing the Trench on Rocks concert in, in Trenchtown um, on Sunday. And where we had 12, 13 acts would perform, nobody's on it anymore. <laughs> where, wow. we had, where we had 12, 13 um, sponsors, Nobody's sponsored. I mean, I'm talking. Even the government is trying to get people in trench town to take vaccines, and they're not even. They're not even. They're not prepared to sponsor it because they're like, Doctor Z's on it, and Doctor Z is a controversial person. He's on social media. He's saying people about um, how terrible the government response to the vac uh, to, to the pandemic has been, and and so forth. So the government. <laughs> so the so, 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 you. <laughs> so you know, you know. Let me tell you. The the the, the 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 um the way how them get you though them them, them teeth them tell the people them say you're crazy. No, yeah, because I have I have actually so many doctors have diagnosed me as crazy. So that's not a they wouldn't be wrong about that part. I have a mental health diagnosis, chronic mental illness, <laughs> bipolar disorder. No, I'm not joking. It's a, it's a, it's a serious thing. Um, but I I don't believe the diagnosis. But that's that's what is that they've said. So if they went to their defenses. They could say, actually, here's a doctor that says this guy is mad. But, but when you listen to what I'm saying, and you and I have been speaking for about 10 minutes now, um, maybe 12 minutes, and, and I, I hope that you have not heard anything from me that suggests that I'm, anyway, I'm unstable in any way. So, and I don't take any medication because I'm Rastafari. So I, do, so I, I don't necessarily need the I, diagnosis. I remember, I remember one time, I remember there was a shooting going in a Jamaica scene. And I was in the middle of the shooting, right? And in all honesty, oh yeah, the, the, um, the guardsman thing, like a, like a, like a policeman. Right. And this came the, right the after the guard. church thing. This came right after the church right. thing. That I was like, "What the fuck again? How <laughs> did I get myself here?" I was like, "I was like, yo, this was not planned. This I got the vehicle that was in the shooting is my vehicle, you know? Yes, is me, is me and my woman. I go about the business, you know? See it." And buck up right in this chaos. And I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to like cry peace. And I say, yo, you know, because I see something ought to go on. And I try to cry peace. And first, I don't want to get shot neither because I see people with guns and things. <laughs> so I try to cry peace and I try to level down the vibe. So I said to the, 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 the brother, we end up shooting the security, say, yo, um, when I say end up shoot the security, I end up saying to the brother, I say, yo, stay right around and search for my demand. Come in a while, go around at the next part and, you know, something happened to him. Right. But when I look, I don't see the man beside me. All I, all I hear is blowing. And when I look, I see the security, I hold him neck. No, I saw the video. I saw the video. Actually, I see the security, I hold him neck and drop a ground. So I said, I, I fright, I fright now because I am worrying. I think so the, 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 the guy with him said so shoot him. I think him get himself not trouble one. Because yeah. if they run your society, I mean, I saw him move. Yeah. So like the turn my back, I mean, I know when the man moved. So next to me, know him around this. But I couldn't see, based on where I was behind my vehicle, I couldn't see the struggle that the youth was trying to, as well them said the youth had tried to disarm him. Yeah. So I couldn't it, see it that. Was, it, it appeared to be self-defense. The man was a licensed firearm holder. Right. And somebody right. trying to take so, his so shooting. Right. But I couldn't see that because I was behind my vehicle. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I said, so I, okay, yeah. boy, and... Because I know mean, I stand up here so with me. I mean, you see me, me look, me see him round this or no. I said, what So me going around and said, no, you shoot the man, you kill the man. Really? And, I'm, and, and because me, I said, John, no star, me can't believe you're going to go kill the man, star, really, blah, blah, blah. Now, so let me was ask like, you, how, how, was that, how was that case disposed of? What, did, did, did the guy got. Um, yo, I, 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 honestly I honestly don't even know, brother. Is that, is it, one, day I'll, one day I'll talk about it. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a whole different side to the whole thing there, but I, I, I okay. can't speak on it. Right? So when I see the man, I hold him short and the blood I spew. All I could remember is a is a brother where I see get shot in a maple and the same thing was happening. Like they see the blood I spew, I'm short. Right? Somebody sent me that video. 
So I said, yo, I'm dead, I'm dead. You know, and drop a grung, and I said, I'm dead. So I said, look, you kill the man, you kill the man, Ray Ray. I said, yo, look. See, I tell us how Vegas attacked you, Ray Ray, from around. I said, boom, boom, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> because I know him. He knows it. It's like, you know, like if me and you fight and, and, and somebody were your friend, I said, yeah. what do I need? What do you need? What's, what's your name? Zazu. Doc, my name is Dr. Zazu. D R Z A. Uh, Zazu. So, so somebody has said, Zazu, I'm me attacked to you, man. Calm down. You see me? I said, bro. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Because the person I try to get the attention to make you know say somebody there with you, basically. Yeah, man. The, but I mean, it can't be so exactly what you were doing. I, I, I saw this. When me answer the man, say, yo, a Vegas attack to you. Calm down, Bridging. Calm down. Look at your, look at your girl. You see me? I said, come in one of the, 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 the security of them will beat him up, continue to beat him up, all of them things. But at the same time, I said, I fuck him, never shoot the man. Because I never mm. see where go on, I never see with the youth. Boom, Correct. I see him with the gun. Right? Correct. So anyway, brother, I said, I start come on, a pressure from the people, and people say, I should I get gunshot, artists put up. I see all artists I put up all statements, I say, yo. <laughs> so the people in basically right? me have clean, clean, I say, I made it to get gunshot and all kind of things. So I see them things, eh? I me have to stay strong through that, Zane. My woman a week yeah. out, and she a ball and beat things. Go back and my woman out to run with. <laughs> See, because the people are going hard. I yeah, remember. Going I, hard I, mean, I, I, it, that was, this, was that the summer of 2019 or 18? I don't remember, I don't, bro, I remember which, which year it was. It, the way it, happened. I think it, was, it could be 2018. Mm. It, could be 20, it could be 2018 or 20. Yeah. I don't even, I'm not even sure. But anyway, the, 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 to get to where you said, the, 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 where, where I want to get to. The I mental health diagnosis. I, I remember talking to a politician, you know. And the man said to me, say, Yo, you can't continue to do this, you know, because you have become a menace to society. And yo, I stand up and I say, Yo, I just start, like I want to start running out of my eye, brother. Call him name, call him name. No, man, me, me, uh, to be honest, him say me and my family, I'm not a member of him, to be honest with you. Okay. Because I try to zone out everything from that. The man said, Yo, basically, the man said, Yo, if you continue, you have to stop. Ray Ray because you have become a menace to society. And I say, and I said to the man, say, you know, so which promise I may explain to him what going on in the video. Zane. And yeah. I don't know if he start to feel sorry for me because he say, like, like me get emotional, see? But I try to say to him, say, yeah. yo, me the behind the vehicle, I don't see what going around there, so. You see me, I say? So the natural thing for a human being to have any form of um, empathy for mankind, if you see a youth get shot in the throat, you see man say and drop a gun like him dead. The natural thing, most human beings are going to say, yo, look where you shoot the man. Because the man around you. So, right. me. so right, it's not right. like me trying to be a menace to society, but people, people really thought, and people were saying like, my mad. Yeah. I mean, I see all over social media, say my mad, my crazy, me a mad man, me I lose my mind. All of them things, I had to deal what? with all of them. Them, them source this we call this this, this this diagnosis from social media correct so now, now in I, my I, case you know it's slightly different because i actually have a diagnosis but what happened was my ex-wife and i had some challenges around custody and you know i was very public about that so people were like oh, you must be having a breakdown now before that you know i was perfectly fine i was i mean i the charity i have is called shashamani sunrise we give about a million dollars per year to the school in trenchtown and, uh, and about right. a million dollars a year to our school in, in Portland, right? Now, right. people say, well, I, I'm going to talk all this and give all this money. Why is he doing that? It's, I do it because I'm trying to encourage others to do these things, right? Right. I, I believe people sometimes, when they see examples of, you know, charitable giving, they may be encouraged to do the same. So that's why I do it. You know, many ones who say you should do your charity, you know, in private. I don't. So anyway... So because I've done that for a number of years, people have seen me on social media. So when they see me and my ex-wife having these challenges with my you know, custody relationship with my son and going to my son's graduation, they say, must be having a breakdown in mad, in mad, in mad. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I became a bad man. <laughs> I was fine when I was giving a billion dollars a year to these schools. But before that, uh, I, I was a bad man. I, was, I even got fired from the university that year. What? I think it was 29. Which, yeah, because I was, I, you know, when I...